In this video, let's make some experiments with those variables. So let's go back to the experiments folder and we will open now the variables.cfm file. Okay, so now it's a very simple HTML file. Let's go here just below the first called fusion comment. And uh, at that location, I will create two variables. So I will use the cfset tag to create those variables. I will create one variable which will be the first name variable. And I will make it equal to my first name. Notice the quotes here around the string of text. Let's create a second variable. So a second CF set. It's going to be last name. And I will make it equal. Oops. And I will make it equal to my last name. Like that. Now, if I want to use those variables, I, of course, have to use the CF output tag that I open and close as well. And inside the CF output tag, let's create a paragraph. And I will write my first name is first name. So here I output the value of the first name variable. And my last name is inside of these hash signs, last name. Okay. Now, if I did not make any typo, this should work. So let's run this in the browser. And you see my first name is Damien. My last name is Brandon. And once again, if I go to the developer tools, you see that what the browser has received is a processed file. It means you see the HTML code down here. It means that the ColdFusion code has been processed and removed from the file by ColdFusion. So what hits the browser, it's a plain HTML file and the browser renders it. So let's go back to ColdFusion Builder for the, the, the rest of it. Now here we will experiment with the fact that the ColdFusion variables are typeless. So let's create another variable with CF set again. And I will call that variable the number, the num. And I will make it equal to 10. Notice that for numbers, we don't need the quotes. So the quotes are only for strings. Now let's create yet another variable. We have set. I will call it new num, new number. And I will make it equal to the variable the number plus 5. So that will make 15. Now let's output CF output. There we go. And inside of the CF output, I create a paragraph. And I will write the new number is, and between the hash signs, I will output new num. Let's take a look at that one we should see the new number is 15. So it all works and you see that we can perform mathematical operations in cold fusion very easily. Now let's experiment with the typeless thing. So I will copy and paste that block of code here and I will change the value of that first variable and I will change it to the string 10. So here the new num variable is created here and it's a number, it contains a number. And then here I want to change the value of that variable and I will make it a string. Now let's take a look at what this does in the browser. So I run the page and of course I have an error. Now the interesting thing here is where the error occurs. You see it says the error occurred in line 27. Now what is line 27? Line 27 is this one. So the error occurs when we try to add 5 to the string 10. And that is interesting because in most other languages, the error occurs on the line 26 when you try to change the variable from a number to a string. Now, because ColdFusion is a typeless language, that line, line 26, is perfectly legal and does not generate any error. But line 27 does, because here, ColdFusion wants to add 5 to uh, the value of a variable. So ColdFusion tries to cast the value of that variable to a number. And it is that casting operation that fails. So it is not the fact that we change the value of the variable from a number to 
a string that causes a problem because ColdFusion is a typeless language it's the fact that I want to add a number to a string that is the problem okay so this stresses the importance the fact that ColdFusion is a typeless language now let's experiment with scopes and I want to show you here the CGI scope now to show you that scope, I will use a tag of ColdFusion that will quickly become one of your best friends when you will program application. And that is the CF dump tag. The CF dump tag will simply dump the content of a variable on the screen. And I have to specify what variable I want to dump. And I will dump here the CGI scope. Now you can write CGI in lowercase or uh, uppercase and doesn't change anything. So let's save that page and run it in the browser. And here is the CGI scope. You see it contains a lot of information about, for example, here the user agent, which means what a browser has been used, about the path that has been called, about the address of the server, about also here, very interesting here, the HTTPS off, so that request is not an HTTPS request. That can be very interesting to check during uh, the development of, of your application. If you want to pay something with your credit card, you want to check if the request is HTTPS. And if it is not, you want to redirect your user to a secure environment for, for payment with the credit card. Okay, so those are some uh, informations that you can find in CGI scope. Now, let's take a look at another scope. So I will remove that CF dump here and I will show you with the same CF dump tag I will show you the server scope there we go and when I run that page there we go you see that we have lots of information here about the cold fusion environment you see that I'm using a cold fusion server with an evaluation license I'm using version 2016 and I'm on a Mac OS, I'm on Mac 10.11.3. So I have lots of information here about the environment in which the server is running and about the version of ColdFusion that I'm using. Now, this illustrates what a scope is. It's a bunch of information that is organized inside of that scope. It also illustrates the fact that some of those scopes are generated for you. I didn't have to create that CGI and server scope. They are there for you to use. Now, other scopes in ColdFusion will have to be created by yourself, but that will come later in the course.